Rhymes developer Greybox has commented on the technical issues that the game has been having for a small amount of players, and they made a comment about De Novo and their game, which is fairly interesting and kind of where my concerns lay into. Obviously, they're doing some consumer-friendly stuff, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Michael here with another topic video. So basically, Rhyme is finally released. Now, I haven't played it because I spent this month's allowance on the game in the background, so basically, yeah, I'll talk about it at the end of the video. But regardless, the game has been having some technical issues for some players, but it's definitely not a majority, and it's actually a very small amount of players. However, the developer has actually been very upfront. Greybox has been like, hey, by the way, if you guys are having technical issues, go ahead and send us your info. And this whole entire announcement basically boils down to kind of three parts. One, they talk about their goals and everything like that, and so they're basically like, hey, we want to make sure everyone has quality, and basically, they want their game to be the best it possibly can, like true developers, you know? And so basically they're like, hey, if you have problems with the game, make sure to send us your feedback. And obviously they talk a little bit about some of the problems that they ended up finding. They found the AMD cards are having some problems. Specifically, I think it was the R RX 800 series. And so basically if you have one of those kind of cards, basically you want to go ahead and look on the forums for some solutions and things like that. They found some issues with their anti-aliasing and just overall, I'm actually very kind of pleased with their sort of transparency on the technical problems with their game. They're like, hey, this is what we found and this is what we're trying to fix. We want our game to be the best it possibly can and here's what we're doing to fix it. And that's super awesome, especially the call out for other kind of people that look in and put in their feedback and stuff like that. And so it's like, yeah, if you're having technical problems and you have Rhyme, go ahead and send them information through the feedback loop and be like, hey, this is what I'm having. This is, you know, the hardware that I'm using. And this is what I would like to be fixed because, you know, if something's not working properly, they kind of need to know to be able to fix it. And so, yeah, I think that's a really, really cool thing for them to end up doing. And so, yeah, that's super cool. However, at the end of the statement, they actually had a comment about DeNovo. And this is another consumer thing that they're actually talking about, but it's not actually specifically with Rhyme that I'm going to be concerned about, but rather the president this is going to become normalized is the fact that at the end they talk about DeNovo and how the DeNovo works with the game, because a lot of people don't like DeNovo. We'll talk about it in a minute, but basically... People are like, hey, we don't like DeNovo. And they're like, yeah, we know. We basically looked at the piracy rates of the games of our style of Rhyme. And basically it scared us because a lot of people pirate those games and then it ends up affecting sales, or at least theoretically it does. And so basically they're like, hey, we don't, we don't want to just have everything kind of thrown out the window and basically make it so that we don't end up having the optimal sales. Because if you've already looked at Rhyme and everything like that, they've already been having some kind of monetary issues especially when it ends up coming to stuff like the nintendo switch like the nintendo switch version is slightly more expensive if you buy the cartridge just because they have to pay for the cartridge they're already selling that game at a loss basically and so they're already having problems with that so they want to maximize their sales and everything like that and that's what drm is about and they said it'll probably get cracked in about two to three weeks based on the other types of games that use this version of de novo now their de novo version basically uses because this is a technical problem sort of thread they were talking about how they don't think that DeNovo is causing the issues with the kind of performance stuff, because people love to blame DeNovo for our kind of problems and stuff like that. And yes, it can cause some performance issues, but basically they said, hey, all it's doing is checking that Steam's DRM is already active. And so basically it's not going to affect your performance whatsoever, which is kind of true. I would kind of agree with that. You know, if you are checking just Steam's API, sometimes Steam's API has problems too, and that can cause performance issues. But normally... Steam is very upfront about it, and they're like, hey, this is what's going on. So, yeah, basically, we don't end up thinking it is the DRM. However, they did state that once the game ends up getting cracked in two to three weeks, as they're kind of predicting, because based off of other games that ended up being cracked using that version of DeNovo, they're like, hey, we're just going to remove it. Like, we're not planning on implementing a new version. They're not going to go through and, like, make sure the DRM is super strict or anything like that. They're just like, no, nah, we're just going to remove it. And while this seems like super consumer friendly, and it technically is because people hate DRM for a very good reason. One, pirates hate it because they can't pirate games, but who cares about them? They're jerks. The main reason why people actually hate it is because it can end up causing problems for legitimate users. And so basically, like, let's say online activations, for example, if you don't have an internet connection, you try to play these games that needs a new activation, you're not going to be able to play it. Like, let's say you have DeNovo, you have reached your limited activations for the day or something like that. Let's say you're messing around with your PC hardware, and then randomly it's like, oh yeah, you can't play this game anymore for some reason. Basically, you got to contact support and it becomes this big whole issue. And pirates obviously don't have to deal with this, and that's kind of upsetting because it's like, hey... Why am I paying for this product that's actually, you know, getting better experience on people that aren't paying for the product? It's kind of a weird kind of mixture of things. And it's like, yeah, it's very upsetting when that ends up going through. The best example I always love to bring up is the fact of sort of SimCity when that ended up coming out. They were like, hey, we have always online DRM on a single player game. And so basically nobody could play the game because the servers were botched because of course they were. And so, yeah, that was kind of a bad example. But this doesn't seem like it's going to affect it, but it's the kind of 
sort of attitude that we should remove DRM once it's been cracked that kind of bothers me. And it's not bothering me because I'm like, oh my god, we need DRM and everything like that. I think DRM is important in our industry. No, piracy isn't as large as AAAs like us to think it is. But at the same time, it is very important, especially for any devs and things like that. And if the president is like, oh, well, it's got to remove, be removed once it ends up getting pirated, then that's going to cause a problem to where it just becomes easier to pirate these games. And I feel like that can negatively impact the game industry, especially when these companies are already struggling so much for any sort of financial gains. And we want these developers to be able to keep making great games, like a game in the background. It had to kickstart it because it's like, hey, we couldn't really find a polisher for it. So yeah, they wanted to be able to end up self-publishing it. And so they basically went through and like, hey, we're going to throw a kickstart and everything like that. And that's... I don't want every developer to have to do that. And so DRM ends up helping with that sort of sales pitch. And if it becomes standard to where we just end up removing DRM the second somebody ends up pirating it, I think it's going to cause an issue to where more people end up pirating it because it becomes easier. There are people out there who just pirate because they want a free game. And that's, you know, it. And others end up pirating when it ends up getting too easy. But there's a lot of people out there who won't pirate because it's just not as easy as buying the game. And if you remove DRM, it just makes it easier to pirate it. And I don't think that is a good thing overall at all. And so I think that there should be some DRM in place no matter what. Now, obviously, Rhyme's still going to have Steam's DRM. So it's not like it's going to be completely free. It's just the idea that people will get in their head of like, hey, we should just remove DRM. And I don't think that's a good idea overall. And yes, I think DRM free stuff is great. And GOG is a great site to end up going to if you want DRM free stuff. Everything on there is DRM free, except for their closed beta stuff. For whatever reason, I think the uh, closed beta for Gwent had DRM sort of. So that was kind of a thing, but also it tied to online accounts and stuff like that. I don't know. There were some people making a big fuss about it, and that could be wrong. I could just be, you know, reading too much into it and stuff like that. But basically, yeah, there were some people that were upset on the forums about it having DRM for whatever reason, because GOG has been known to not have DRM. But regardless, I think DRM is important. And so just kind of making the president that we should remove DRM as soon as pirates get a hold of it, I think is kind of dumb because it's still going to prevent people from pirating the game and there are developers that end up using pir anti-piracy as other sort of means as well like let's say for peer-to-peer -peer games they'll end up using it as part of their anti-cheat for example it's like hey pirated versions of the game may be able to modify their code they may be able to get around our anti-cheat and so basically you don't want pirated versions of the game to be able to connect to the servers and normally this is fixed by accounts and things like that but not always a lot of indie games are not going to have specialized accounts maybe they don't use steam's api Maybe they, you know, have to have some sort of anti-cheat put into place and they have to actually manually code all that stuff. And so basically they run into a situation to where if they have to remove DRM, it's just going to make it easier to bypass all that code because the DRM could end up checking for those files and be like, hey, you know, we've noticed some modified files. We're not going to start up the game. Fantasy Star Online 2, for example, ends up running this in sort of their DRM as well to where it's like, oh, this this has been removed. Let's go ahead and do this other thing. And so it's like, yeah, it's it's a very complex situation because basically it's one of those situations where a lot of people are going to have very strong feelings about this sort of thing because DRM is something that can cause a lot of negative effects for a lot of people. And especially when you're a legitimate user that buys all the games such as myself, it is annoying when you end up getting into a game that, you know, has problems with DRM. It's like, oh yeah, you can't play this game because you've activated it too many times. For example, I can't play Far Cry 3 right now because it says I've activated the game too many times. So basically, I haven't tried it now. Let me install it because I bought it through Steam, but for some reason, the Uplay URL thing is just like not working. Not URL, but the launcher. I don't know why I said URL. And so basically, I might have to contact support to be able to even play the game because I've changed my PC hardware too many times while owning that game because it was one of the first PC games I had on one of my older systems. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's very annoying for legitimate users. However, there is importance to it and there is value and I don't want people to overlook that and I do not want it to be normalized for them to just kind of remove it. I don't want DRM free to be the only way and i think there's a kind of worry in me personally about these sort of indie devs and everything like that when they end up starting removing these drms and everything like that and the kind of normalization of it is going to cause some harm in some way because maybe there's a developer that will be negatively affected or maybe they have a hard large update and they can end up using that drm to have sort of a push into new sales and things like that but if they end up removing it then people are just going to pirate it and it's just yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I, just, I hate the piracy scene, and I think that it's a huge negative impact on the game industry. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm overspouting it. And obviously, give your thoughts in the comments as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this one. Like I said, leave your comments down below. I know a lot of people are very against DRM, and I'm very much against the grain on that. I understand it, but at the same time, I'm 
I understand why it's in place and why developers and publishers end up using it so much because it is an important part of our industry. It's required for a lot of these sort of online services because we need something to make sure we're actually going to get paid because if we don't get paid, well, then we can't continue making products that people love. And so that's kind of bothersome. Anyways, the game in the background has been Shantae Half Hero Genie or Half Genie Hero. I think it's Half Genie Hero. I think that's half genie here. That makes more sense. I just picked it up the other day. This is basically where my monthly game funds went to. I'm working on a review for it, so look forward to that on the channel eventually. But yeah, this game is fantastic. I love it. I love the other Shantae games. However, they are sort of lacking in polish in some places. Like, they're polished. That was the wrong word to use for it. But rather, it has like design hiccups and things like that. And that I'm not necessarily a fan of. And it did have some sort of hiccups in this, like some of the design and things like that, which is kind of questionable. And some of the mechanics didn't really make a lot of sense. But this one so far, has just been superb. It's just a really good platformer. And they kind of went back to the whole sort of classical roots that they ended up going through with this sort of game and the way that they ended up designing the first one. Because the second one, while it's even better in that it's designed and everything like that, it still ended up having a lot of problems in sort of the way that it kind of shifted away from the magic use and everything like that. And yeah, so I don't know. I haven't beaten the second game though. So I had to go back and play that. I have that on my 3DS. And then I got to near the end of the game and then basically stopped playing it because it was on my 3DS and I didn't want to pull out my 3DS every time I wanted to play it. So I picked it up on PC and I'm about halfway through the game now. And so I'll finish it eventually. But I don't know, now that I have this one, I might just play this one because this one's just a million times better. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, like I said, and I will see you guys in the next video. And I'm going to continue with my addiction to playing as a genie with hair whips. I like this game.